So here's the new Sony 24 millimeters G Master. So hi, so who are you? So my name is Ben Pilling. I'm the technical marketing manager for digital imaging at Sony Europe. And uh, this is a very hot anticipated. Uh, people are excited about this one. Why? So this is our 24mm f1.4 G Master. Um, it's been highly requested from lots of different types of photographers. So whether that be landscape, architectural, astrophotographers, and it is a G Master lens. So that means it has a G Master quality. What that means is it has a supreme blend of resolution and beautiful bokeh. Those two things are actually very difficult to achieve at the same time. Quite often as manufacturers, we introduce elements into the lens to increase resolution. Um, the downside to that be is things like onion ring artifacts and bokeh and so on. With the G Master lenses, you have things like XA lens elements. Inside the 24mm 1.4 G Master, we have two XA lens elements. Those are extreme aspherical. And those elements are made down to a precision of 0.01 of a micron. So that's talking about uh, the smoothness of the surface. The accuracy of that smoothness is measured down to about 100 thousandth of a millimeter and the end result of that is the fact that you get extreme high resolution but also beautiful bokeh all of that in a 24 millimeter f 1.4 lens and from the way we construct it to be compatible not only with the lenses of today but also the lenses of tomorrow because as number one sensor manufacturer within the industry we know what lenses are coming tomorrow it's designed to have resolution to work on those lenses going forward into the future. The lens itself works, I mentioned different types of photography, actually for astrophotography we're getting a lot of interest because there's minimal coma aberration coming up on there. So if you're shooting the stars at night, we're very confident uh, in the quality that comes out of this uh, and lack of aberration within that, even at fully open aperture. One difference you'll notice straight away if you're using other 24mm f1.4s is the size and weight. It's actually very small and compact. I think it's only 445 grams. On top of that, on the lens itself, you get an aperture ring. So this means you can change manually the aperture on the uh, lens itself. Um, it does have an A-stop mode. That means you, if you select here, then you can change the aperture from the body rather than on the lens. As I move this round at the moment, it's actually clicking as I move between uh, the different positions. A lot of photographers like to know exactly what they're changing, so if they're changing by a third of a stop, a full stop, and so on. If you're a video guy and you're changing aperture, you probably don't want that sound on there. So what you also get on this lens is a click switch. So here on the base, you can see that there's a switch here, and it means that if you are moving the aperture ring, you're either going to have a click on there, so you, if you want that feedback to tell you that you're changing the aperture, you can have it, but potentially if you're a video guy, you might want to switch it to off, then it's completely smooth and there's no sound coming off there, so extremely useful. On top of that, the 24 millimeter does also have a focus hold button. So this is on the side here, and like lots of our other lenses, this is customizable. So we do find that a lot of users like to assign this maybe to eye autofocus. Again, a very revolutionary Sony feature, which is class leading within the market. And there, you can easily customize this button and control focus on there. So although this can be used for many different types of photography, we probably don't even think of some kind of portraits on there. But 24 millimeters at f1.4, you can still get beautiful defocused backgrounds with minimal distortion. And being a G Master, it is that beautiful blend of high resolution and beautiful bokeh. So, um because it's lighter and more compact, is there any chance that it might be lower quality somehow or no? Absolutely not. This is G Master. Like I say, our G Master lenses are tested to extremely high standards. So, not to go too boring on you here, but with MTF charts, we internally test our G Master lenses up to 50 line pairs per millimeter. So, again, traditionally our G Master lenses might be slightly bigger, might be slightly bigger because we're saying we want to offer something with extreme high quality and we, like I say, the size of it's bigger, so what? With the 24mm, it's a, it's a great combination because it is compact size, but it's still G Master quality. And so that means the utmost resolution, the utmost quality, beautiful bokeh, and there's still no compromise. This is a G Master. So what makes beautiful bokeh? Is it just uh, some kind of engineering? Uh... So that, that is a great question, actually. A lot of people don't ask that. So a lot of people are interested in how the bokeh of a lens looks. You, you quite often see on forums, when a lens is released, people say, what's the bokeh like? It's very difficult because actually a lot of, um, a lot of testers, you know, there's no, there's no standard chart test where you can say, this is great bokeh, this is not great bokeh. Things that we look at is, is it circular? So that's obviously, like say, a 
depending partly on the aperture to try and make sure it's got a circular aperture, but also the lens elements within that can also contribute it. So it might be that you get some form of vignetting or something caused by the lens elements. That can contribute towards how circular your bokeh is. You've, there's also the kind of smoothness. So in terms of the edge of the bokeh, do you get hard lines on there? Again, if it's hard lines, going around the edge of it, it's a little bit distracting where you feel. So you want something that's a bit smoother in its fall, even within um, that area of bokeh that you can see itself. One thing I mentioned before was that if you put elements inside a lens, a spherical element, so it makes sure you get really good resolution, quite often you can get onion rings. So basically lots of circles coming up within the bokeh. But the XA lens elements, which are actually two within the 24 millimeter, help you get that bl blend of high resolution, but no onion rings with on there as well. On top of that, our G Master lenses are designed by precision engineers and they have software beforehand, which actually helps them render, give them an idea in their construction as they change it in design as to what the bokeh will look like. So again, as well as a traditional testing charts of resolution, looking at uh, contrast as well as high resolution, you also have this coming into the factory. It's something that's important that we try and deliver a lens that's top quality all round. So uh, the G Master is a top class from Sony. And so uh, what's so different about G Master? So the difference about G Master is the fact that because we make most of the uh, sensors within the industry, we have more than 50% market share of sensors, we know where sensors are going. And what does that matter? Well. It matters because you can have, like I say, a really high resolution sensor, but if your lens is not good enough for that sensor, then you're gonna get bad image quality. And as such, because we know what's coming in the future, it means we can design our lenses to be high resolution. Some people, like say, if they use particular older lenses, you find that the resolution of those lenses, because they're from film times, is not high enough. And as you've seen with, with uh, digital sensors, it's going higher and higher with megapixel in general, and it puts more demands on the lens. Sony being the provider of many lenses with uh, many sensors within the market, we know the direction that's going to go. So to give you an example, when we launched Alpha 7 and 7 R back in 2013, our guys in Tokyo knew that a 42 megapixel sensor was coming up with the Alpha 7R Mark II. And that was long before that was launched. So they made sure that from the start of the launch, our full frame mirrorless system, they made every lens to be able to resolve higher than 42 megapixel resolution. And in the same way, the G Master series are designed to go even further. So this means that our guys in Tokyo know what's gonna come in the future. And we, we have a, a marketing message which says, tomorrow's lenses today. It sounds a little bit uh, cliche or cheesy, but it's actually true because they know what's coming and the internal tests we do on these make sure it's rigorously done so that if you're using this lens in a few years time, it's still gonna give you amazing quality on the cameras of tomorrow. So uh, you even mentioned, I think, in the press release, uh, in the press conference, maybe 100 megapixel kind of this kind of stuff, right? Potentially. So I'm not sure if I exactly uh, figure right what on, what on there, but we do look very much in the design of our whole system at what's going to be coming and how we're going to develop that further. So we're quite unique because not all manufacturers make their own lenses, sensors and processors. And within the design of our system, we make sure that those things marry up and we also look in the long-term plan so we know what's going to come so we can match those all together. So right now I'm using the G Master 16 to 35. I set it at 24. Uh, so this is at 2.8, right? So what's going to be the difference if I use this one instead? So you do get that much larger aperture. Like I say, I mean, the 16 to 35 2.8 is a very popular lens. Um, talking from a personal point of view, I work at um, a lot of events like this at Photo Kina. Personally, this is the lens I've been most requested, actually, uh, in my personal experience. We have people who are interested, like I say, in many different types of photography, sometimes architecture, sometimes landscape, and so on. I mentioned Astro before. And that bright aperture just gives you greater flexibility. And you find that, like I say, that's whether it's low light quality with the likes of Astro, where it's really crucial to have that big aperture, where, as I mentioned before, we have minimal coma aberration. But also, you get things like sports photographers. Those guys, they're shooting most of the time telephotos, this kind of thing. What happens is though, maybe 5% of the time, maybe say at a football game when somebody scores a goal, the players run up really close to them, all of a sudden, they need to be on uh, a, a wide angle lens. 
And something like this, which is 24 1.4, they can pick up, attach to another camera. It's light, it's small, so it's easy to fit with that other kit. They can hit that f1.4 so they can get that real separation coming off the background. And so whether you're looking for that, for wedding photography, for landscape, for astro, the bright aperture on there, like I say, is going to be able to make your subject stand out even more than before. And it's wide, but uh, the corners are very, they're not distorted, they're great. So of course we try and keep uh, distortion to uh, a minimum, and we think it does really well. Even at f1.4, we're very confident in this lens. So sometimes with lenses you have to tone the aperture down, but really the quality which comes out of it, we're really proud of. So this G Master I'm using right now, I think in the US is 22, uh, 22 not thousand, 2200 dollars, right? Uh, so this is uh, slightly more affordable, right? Is in a little. So uh, half, yeah, in uh, nearly half. In Europe, in Europe, we're looking at uh, 1,600 euros, which is a great price for a lens which is extremely high quality and also very highly requested. So it means it's a great option for our customers because they're able to look at our system and not only see a great lens lineup now of 30 full frame E-mount lenses, but also a lineup which offers things right across the field. So whether you're looking at wide angle, telephoto, f2.8 zooms, telephoto, our 400 millimeter 2.8, we offer something at different areas for different customers. And that can be things like size and weight, where you've got um, our 85 millimeter F1.4 G Master. That lens is stunning. Um, and it, some people actually, like I say, when we see them trying out our system, they actually fall in love with that lens. But we also have the likes of an 85 millimeter F1.8. It's much more compact much lighter, more affordable. So if someone's not looking at the 85mm 1.4 G Master, it means that we have options for them out there as well. And the 24mm G Master here, it gives that great combination of G Master quality, but at a more affordable price. And that's really important as I look at a full frame system with 30 native lenses. And don't forget that in terms of autofocus and mirrorless, you generally look at hybrid autofocus with phase detection and contrast detection. And that's different, it requires different motors from SLR lenses. So um, inside this lens, the 24 millimeter, we have what we call direct drive SSM motors. We've used those in some of our other lenses before, um, but this one that's developed, this is, is actually newer, and it's got three times the amount of thrust compared to our previous motor in that. It's basically very quick, but, and powerful but very accurate and it enables you to get great focus whether you're using hybrid autofocus with uh, stills or with video and as I mentioned the focus systems of SLRs um, uh, lenses are very different so if you were to adapt a lens on, onto a mirrorless camera you find it's much better for stills and for videos going for the native mount and having 30 full frame mount lenses it gives us um, great options for our customers. So. Uh People buy lenses because they want to be future-proof. That's also why, why uh, you say that your engineers are future-proofing them, right? But, but you just mentioned that there's something that might be new in this in terms of the autofocus compared to previous G Masters. Does that mean that G Masters get Mark II, Mark III, Mark IV, or, you know? Do they ever get these kind of, I Like, uh, you know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean. Uh, and if my Tokyo colleagues tell me, then I'll be told I can't tell you. <laughs> but yeah. actually, like I say, we'll listen to the market demands. So, as I mentioned, me personally, I've been mostly requested this 24mm f1.4. That is actually the lens I've physically have been asked most by customers. If we get market feedback that the next lens you require is a prime, is a zoom, is something else, like I say, then uh, we'll listen to that market feedback. So that really what is what drives what lenses are going to come in our lineup. And it's great for gimbals. So right. like I, so like I say again, it's not it's, too big. So it's relatively small and light, stabilize. and you can see that just like I say, it fits in the hand so nicely, and it means that like I say that even a full frame system here, you can get G Master quality in a compact size that's nice and light and carry it around all day.